Good morning. I'm live and it is Bank Holiday Monday. Today is the um, the 8th of May 2023. Uh, I'm reading out of Winged Pharaoh. It's one of uh, Joan Grant's uh, Far Memory books. In fact, it was her first one. It, it, it plays in ancient Egypt uh, before the time of uh, Babylon and the Flood. And she is a young girl, uh, Sekitara, called Sekita by her dad, who is the pharaoh. She is a young girl still here, and she describes her life with her brother Nia. Chapter 11. Seership. Nia's wild cat never got tame, even after two years. He got a mate for him for it so it shouldn't be too lonely, and had a special house built for it, which had a long run with grass and trees to make it feel natural. I don't know why Nea was so fond of it. He used to spend hours trying to teach it to be a reliable friend. He always fed it himself, and at last it seemed really pleased to see him, and used to come running up to the gate when he called. But one day, for no reason, except that it must have been feeling an especially bad temper, the wild cat gave him a terrible deep bite in the calf of his leg. Luckily, Saturn was cleaning out the run at the time and he drove it off with a rake. Nea always hated being bothered when he had hurt himself, but this time he couldn't keep it private, for he could hardly walk and blood was streaming down his leg. He went and told father about it because he knew Ma'ata would fuss and would be sure to say, I've told you a thousand times that horrid animal would turn on you one day. He didn't want to tell mother because seeing us hurt always made her anxious, although she never said so. Father was perfect when you hurt yourself. Sorry, father was perfect when you, when you hurt yourself. He made me feel as if we were two warriors comparing wounds after a battle. So even if I had fallen out of a tree from sheer clumsiness, I would pretend I'd been wounded in a chariot charge. We used to make up imaginary stories about what we had done in battle. And I got so interested that there was no need to be brave. When father saw Nea's leg, he sent for Patka Kifa, who looked at it with the eyes of spirit. He said that a muscle was torn, but if it were healed twice a day, it would be well in about fifteen days. Father didn't send for a healer priest, he, but he drove the life of Pata into Nea's wound himself. Then he put on an ointment and bandaged the leg with charged linen. Nea couldn't walk for several days. Pata Kifa used to look at his leg every morning to see how it was getting on, and he often stayed and talked to us. He was very understanding with children, although he had none of his own. He was skilled at carving, and quite often he would help Nea make things. Once he mended Nea's model boat for me, when I had borrowed it after Nea had told me not to, and I had broken it. One day, when his leg was almost healed, Nea asked him, How can you see the wound in my leg when it is bandaged and you have your hands over your eyes? I know it's your seer's eyes, but I don't quite understand how it works. And Patakifa answered, I don't look at the body. I look at its life-bearing counterpart. And I said, You mean the car, the one that's written with two upstretched arms and a horizon? Nea frowned at me for interrupting, but Takifa went on. On earth there is no stillness. Everything, can, everything you can see has colour and is reflecting rays of light. Some things throw the rays back faster than others do. He reached for the checker ball with which I had been playing. Let us pretend that this ball is a ray of light and that and that, that wall is the thing it is thrown against. Now, if the wall were of stone, it would throw the ball right back to us, and that is as if a ray of light shone upon something that reflected it at the speed we call violet, for violet reflects light the fastest of all colours. 
If that wall were of wet mud, the ball would fall in the flower bed at its foot. And that is if a ray of light were reflected from something red. For red reflects light the slowest of all colors. Anything that reflects light faster than violet, our earth eyes cannot see. Now if that wall were of the substance of the car, it, throw, it would throw the ball back right over the palace and across the vineyard. For the speed of light reflected from the car is that much faster in comparison with anything that ordinary ear, earth sight can see. Now when I'm looking at a man's car with the eyes of the spirit, I cover my eyes with my hand so that the slow light, which we know as color, is cut off. And then with my trained sight, I can look upon the swiftness of the car, and yet it seems to be as still as sleeping man, because my seer's sight travels at the speed, at the same speed. Perhaps I'm not explaining clearly what I mean. Naya said, "Oh, I understand. It's like this, isn't it? If I was looking out of the window and the cow walked past, I couldn't help seeing it, because it would be going at an ordinary speed. But if an arrow." from a very strong bow when past, it would be going so quickly that I might not notice it, just as sometimes it's very difficult to see a dragonfly moving. I interrupted. If I'm looking through a doorway and a chariot gallops past, I can hardly see it because it's going so quickly. But if there are two people galloping and two chariots abreast, they can see each other as clearly as if they were both standing still, and a seer just travels at the same speed as whatever he is looking at. I think Tarkifa was pleased. I was so good at understanding things. I wondered if he ever got impatient when people wouldn't listen to his wisdom, and I said, when people won't believe the truth, don't you want to do a big magic before them so that they must realize their ignorance? Patakifa laughed and said, if you see a man who's starving, it is well to give him food. But he refuses it, but if he refuses to eat of it, thinking it is poisoned, do not force it between his teeth. For food thus given may choke him instead of ending his hunger. And do not give a large bowl of food to a starving man, or he may gulp it too quickly, and then suffer pain, and say, That was a most grievous diet, in future I must avoid it. Rather should you feed him gradually, a little t at a time, and he must have milk before he is ready for strong meat. Then he will have great benefit from what you give him, and will long for more with which is to build his strength. Then Patakifa had to leave us, for it was the hour of audience, and I said to Nea, That shows it's no good trying to explain things to people who don't want to listen. Because in that story the food meant teaching, and the hungry man was an ignorant one. And Naya said, Sikita, I'm very glad you realized that, because it's so very obviously true. I thought he was being grand and teasing me, but I wasn't quite sure. So I said, let's go off and have a bathe. And so we did. This is the end of chapter 11. The next one is chapter 12, entitled The Soul. Have a lovely Monday.